Uh, we have been testing this thing around Australia for the last two years. I'll share you our experience with the iTech 120X. You're an idiot. You have no idea. You can't put lithium batteries under bonnet. You're stupid. They don't like water. They hate the heat and they hate corrugations. It's gonna bite you in the ass when you need it the most. And what would you say to them now? They were wrong. <laughs>where we can actually make this video. We've done enough hours of testing, enough really shitty tracks.
and we were soon to find out that that review was horribly wrong because they were reviewing a different spot altogether. We decided um, to go to this camp and halfway down it, it was overgrown. It was almost at the point where you'd struggle to even get a four-wheel drive in there, let alone a four-wheel drive plus a caravan. Uh, and we did not see anyone. It took us about three to four hours to complete this track. We finally got to the end of it, set up camp, and I don't think I've ever been uh, more disappointed in my life. Not only did we not find the campsite that was listed on Wiki Camps because it wasn't actually there, but we also destroyed our caravan. We ripped the electric brakes straight out from out of it because we broke a heap of stuff. So not only did we not find camp, we spent three to four hours breaking our equipment for no avail. We feel so defeated. So not only did we get snapped, broken things on the van, but we got a heap of dust in because we drove 300 k's on red dirt today. Everything's literally dusted inside. And to make things worse, we didn't even get to where we wanted to go. We're physically five kilometers away, but just didn't get there, eh? Spewing. Yeah, we just feel defeated. <laughs> Not only was it remote and we didn't see anyone out there, but it was hot, it was corrugated, and it was harsh. So these comments about these batteries gonna let us down at this point was really creeping into my head. We're breaking a lot of stuff on the van. So for us, we were definitely worried about the batteries at this point. Not only that, we were testing them out physically and heat corrugations and stuff, but we were also asking a lot for them, running heating elements like kettles, um, toaster makers, all sorts of stuff, and really testing out the discharge rates of these batteries. Eventually, we made it out of Millstream National Park. Um, the next day, we ran into a local that actually told us that no one had towed that track in there for years and years, like it's been smashed by the wet seasons. Um, a lot of water has moved through there and changed the track dramatically. And he hasn't seen another van or anything in there for a long bloody time, which we weren't surprised about at all. So with this newfound confidence that we had, we decided to tackle one of Australia's toughest roads, which I'm sure you guys know at home, the Gib River Road. sends shivers up people's spines. It's renowned to break cars, um, break really expensive, well thought out vehicles um, and just absolutely destroy them. And funnily enough, as we started entering the Gib River Road right at the Derby end of it, we saw a brand new 79 with a chassis extension, coil converted with the whole ARB catalog thrown at you with a snap diff. Um, he was towing as well. He had the car and the caravan on the back of a tilt tray heading the other way. And, I remember looking at Sarah and just thinking, what the f are we getting ourselves into? With our humble little Chinese imported caravan and our humble 150 series Prado, um, we thought we were, I don't know what we're thinking actually, we were just absolutely packing our ducks. Um, and that point on, it was preservation mode. And keeping in mind, these batteries are responsible for our water supply. So the pumps, if the pump stops, we'd have to tap into the tank somehow and get the water out. Our food and stuff in the fridges and stuff goes off. Um, a lot of our food was kept in those fridge and, the fridge and freezer that we had on board. So you could imagine if that fridge dies and we lose all our food, the only other service station or food point is 400 k's down the road at Mount Barnett Station. So if you have any sort of accident on the way from here to there, your stuff pretty much because you're going to be on the side of the road if your batteries are cooked and you're broken down you're going to run out of food super quick you're going to struggle to get the water out of your tanks imagine how much we actually rely on these batteries um, to keep us going they're the heart of the whole system so like i said these thoughts of this doubt um, that people had instilled in me as a person that had never toured australia before that I was taking their word, essentially. Even though I didn't want to like, I didn't like their word, I was taking their word, and that doubt definitely crept back into my head. We ended up getting to Mount Barnett Station, restocking, um, having the best experience. With that newfound confidence, we decided to tackle Columba Roo Road. If you think the gib is bad, this, 
Columbaroo Road. If anyone's ever done it, they know exactly what I mean. It is corrugated to the max. This is an ungazetted, unmaintained road all the way up to Mitchell Falls and Honeymoon Bay. Uh, we wanted to go to Mitchell Falls, which is about eight hour drive off the Gibb River Road. So you turn left off the Gibb, head up towards Columbaroo. Uh, the corrugations were 150 mil high. And as we were hitting them, I remember thinking these batteries don't like corrugations. They don't like heat. And I think, holy shit, like, what are we doing? Like, this is stupid. We eventually get up to Mitchell Falls. Uh, we dodge a few fires on the way up too. It was the most magical experience ever. Was I shitting myself? 100%. If something goes wrong out there, you're definitely gonna know about it. I've heard some absolute horror stories of that joint. So with that being said, we did some really hard tracks in WA. And don't get me wrong, a lot of things broke on that trip. Um, none of them being the battery though. We had antenna snap, um, things rattle loose and fall out on us, a shit ton of dust. We had a lot of things go wrong on us with that trip but the batteries held up perfectly. We have so much confidence in these batteries that we decided when we did upgrade the van to the Urban Armor Light, which is our new van, it's a 16 foot hybrid pop top. We decided to put four of the things in it because we like them so much. One thing I want to touch on too, when we decided to build this new van, like obviously price is a massive thing. These, these vans aren't free. Like a lot of people think they're free, they're not free, right? So when we go to designing the 12 volt, money comes into it too, because we're not just an open money pit where we can just take as much out as we want. We have savings and we have to stay on budget or we don't travel. So for us to have a 12 volt system that's elaborate enough to run all our charges, to run the aircon, to run all the things we want to run, it's simply unaffordable for us to go with like a red, I know who I'm talking about, or the green company. Like that sort of product, they're, they're too expensive for us and iTech World are extremely affordable. For instance, a battery of 100 amp hours from iTech, currently they're on sale for $750, um, where that equivalent battery would cost us around two grand. So you can see the savings that we're talking about. It's more than half as cheap. At the time, we knew that these batteries are tough. We've proven them ourselves. So not only were they affordable, we proved them on them tracks, they never let us down, and we believe in them too. So we ended up putting four in the, the armor light and we run the air con off it. We also run heating elements, um, we run the heating, we don't have a diesel heater, so we run the reverse cycle air conditioner on heating, um, which is a massive plus for us. Um, so we've got four in there at the moment. Never let us down, uh, and we've done tracks like Cape York, so we've spoken a bit about the caravan side of things, putting them in the caravan. One other big controversial topic, um, which I'll get into now, is lithium batteries under bonnet. Without flapping the gums too much more, let's get this lead acid battery out. So I've disconnected the battery clamp and the cables. Uh, this thing actually weighs about 40 kegs. So, oh, he's gonna bust his poo poo valve. <laughs> Alright, so that one's out. This one is noticeably lighter. This weighs 11.8 kilos. Uh, so that's good. You're saving about 30 kilos by putting one of these under bonnet. So after learning for our first mistake, like when we put that iTech 120X install video up on our first van when we first started, copped all that hate, I then thought to myself, bugger it, I won't even tell people that I'm putting one of these things under bonnet. That's what I did, I installed one under bonnet and instead of telling people what I was gonna do, I'm gonna tell people what I've done with it.
at the end of the day, showing someone what you've done with it instead of telling someone what you're gonna do with it is far more powerful. Probably the only battery that's really rated under bonnet, there is one other company that does it. Um, and this battery is not only rated under bonnet, but it's also an AGM drop-in replacement. So for us, we didn't have a lithium charger in Percy the Prado. So for us, we could save ourselves $400 on not upgrading DC to DC with lithium capabilities and buy this battery. So not only are we saving money because the battery is cheaper than their opponents, but we're also not having to upgrade our DC to DC charger to actually accommodate it. So that's what we did. We chucked one under bonnet. Uh, and like I said, I didn't tell anyone that we did it purely because, like I said, I want to show people what it can do rather than telling people what I'm going to do with it. We, we ran it for about six to eight months and had a pretty cruisy life. We did a lot of highway Ks, a few really hot days on the highway, which apparently they don't like heat and the engine bay, you could imagine, uh, creates a lot of heat. So I didn't do anything fancy. I didn't put any insulation around it. I just literally dropped it in and away it went. For a long time, it was charging well. Um, everything was good about it, and then we decided to hit Cape York. If anyone watched that series, which we just posted on YouTube, people know what happened to our car, which leads me on to the next point. So you put something in the bonnet bay, if you do a river crossing, bet your ass it's going underwater, so it has to be able to go underwater. So we weren't only submerging this thing underwater, but it was hot, it was corrugated and it was pretty much the worst environment for a lithium battery. We decided to do the tele truck, which was about halfway through our Cape trip. Um, we got all the way to Bramwell Junction. Um, it's been hot, corrugated, all them things. And so far so good. The battery was still running the angle in the back perfectly. It was still running everything that we had coming off it perfectly. Not one issue whatsoever. Uh, because we were driving every day, it was staying at about 100% capacity. Uh, until we hit the tele track. This year, the tele track had one of the biggest wet seasons due to the La Nina cycle that it ever has. So everyone knows about this La Nina cycle, creating all the floods in Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia is even copying it now. Shout out to everyone that's going through floods. Um, hope you guys recover well. You poor buggers, hopefully it comes good. Everyone reckons January it's gonna bugger off this till an El Nino cycle, so fingers crossed for that. So we had a massive wet season up at the Cape, so the rivers were especially full. There was crossings in places crossings haven't been ever before. Uh, and we knew that we had our work cut out for us. We were running two lithium batteries under bonnet, a starting lithium battery and this iTech 120X. We did about three to four river crossings that were bonnet to over bonnet in places. Um, so the battery was definitely being submerged sometime for you know seconds at a time. We finally made it to the end of the tele track thinking that we sort of had it in the bag. We got this far. Um, and then we hit Nolans. Nolans is renowned for taking cars. I have the utmost respect for Nolans Crossing. It is deep, it is sandy, it is boggy, and it is relentless. We finally got to Nolans. That last creek crossing was bloody deep. The tracks this year have just been unruly. This is probably arguably one of the biggest challenges on the tele track, and that's Nolans. It claims cars every year. I've got a massive respect for this place. It's not a massive crossing in length, but it takes twice as many cars as any other river crossing up at the Cape. You was running lithium under bonnet. Cape York trip was a massive test for this product. So we hit Nolans uh, and we ended up floating. As soon as I hit the wall to come up out of Nolans, the back end floated uh, and we were actually stuck in Nolans Creek for 25 to 30 seconds. We counted on the video replay. Uh, the whole time this 120X battery was submerged in the water. I honestly thought that's the end of it. You can't submerge a lithium battery in a silty creek um, after it's just been abused like we've abused it for over a year at this point. Um, it can't survive, no way can it survive. Oh shit. You land in the water mate. popped out and it was still running 13.3 volts which for these batteries is fully charged um, and to this day we've actually sold Percy the Prado now but to this day never had an issue with that battery under bonnet and we like to think that we tested it to the point where any usual human would. Cape York um, is a massive test for that battery and it passed with flying colours. As this is an experience review, this isn't just based off numbers and figures and stuff. If you guys are chasing the technical review, I do recommend going to a channel called Explore Oz. 
um, and he has tested this battery for its discharge specs uh, and rating. So I'll put a link to his video below this one. So if you want to look at the technical side of things as well, the video that we put together today is purely our experience with this battery. We have the utmost respect for it and we could recommend it for our nana and pop to buy. Mum and dad, brother and sister, we recommend this stuff to our family. It's done pretty bloody well. We've used it full time for two years in some of Australia's harshest roads, harshest climates, harshest conditions. So for us, um, we stand firmly behind iTech World. And yeah, they've been amazing for us. Uh, and yeah, without their batteries in our van and our setup, arguably our Australia lap wouldn't have been as good as having a really good battery system really does play a huge part in how your experience is. Our affiliation with iTech World, we're not trying to hide from anyone. We do have a discount code with iTech World. Also, iTech World are having a huge sale on right now, which is 80% off. And if you use our code SKT, you get a further 5% off. And on top of all that, free shipping. So if you are ordering a lot of stuff, normally shipping is a big cost. So you're saving that extra amount too, but it runs out very soon. So if you don't buy now, you're gonna miss out uh, and it won't be this cheap for a long bloody time. So now is the time to buy, mark my words. With the 120X battery, um, we stand firmly behind this product. We recommend it, we rate it, and yeah, use our code if you want one yourself. And yeah, we'll see you next time.